into our three, or as I like to call it, the third half of our three-hour tour here on uh, Flint's College Mix. My guest this hour, um, for those of you who have gotten completely sick and tired of uh, presidential <laughs> politics, it's local politics time, <laughs> and we're starting to talk about some of the races, and as is always our custom, we try to meet all of the candidates that are running. Uh, last week, we had uh, the Democratic challenger uh, to, uh, in the primary, to uh, Genesee County Sheriff Bob Piquel, uh Argentine Township Police Chief uh, Dan Allen. And joining me now in the studio is uh, a rare bird in Genesee County, a Republican uh, <laughs> candidate for sheriff in the Republican primary, unopposed, but um, a, an interesting uh, uh, guy to be sure. His name is Matt Kroll. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Am I saying that right? You are. Matt yeah. Kroll? Kroll, yes. Okay. Very good. Um, now, Matt, you're not a cop. No, I am not. No, I am not. <laughs> I mean, I thought we just got cut right to it because Let's a lot right of people are going to ask about that. That is not required. It is not. Tennessee no, county I meet all requirements uh, to uh, run and be elected as county sheriff. Because you're not a cop, what makes you interested in that gig, <laughs> if I can put it that way? Well, let, let's again jump to the chase. First of all, God spoke it to my heart to run. I know that the current sheriff needs to be replaced, and he does not need to be replaced with another politician. I've tried to encourage others to run, that I would get behind them, and uh, that didn't happen. And so I decided that somebody has to somebody has to run that is going to represent the people of the county of Genesee. There's a case to be made for civilian administration over a law enforcement agency and, and of course, the county jail, which is the primary uh, um, function of the Genesee County Sheriff. But, um, but what, from an administrative standpoint, what makes you think that that's something that you're skilled for? Well, first of all, I do understand the law. I understand the law in this aspect. I understand God's sovereign law, the Ten Commandments, and, and the basic premises of, of uh, Judo-Christian. I also understand the Constitution. I read both of those documents on a daily basis. Uh, and that's the problem, is that we've become so, so uh, people oriented within our law enforcement not that not necessarily that in Genesee County that that they're uh, so bad here however the thing is is that they're still not public servants like they used to be and that's one of my intentions is to bring that back now you brought up the the uh, the jail <coughs> let's go Excuse there for me. a second sure. there are a lot of well, abuses. Yeah, but just for a second. I don't okay. There are a lot, a lot of, of abuses that are in jail. Not, right, exactly. <laughs> there are a lot of abuses that are going on in the jailhouse. Why? These are people that have traffic violations or they uh, haven't been able to pay for whatever reason. Some, a lot of times it's a, it's a deadbeat dad, but not all the time. So some of them don't, can't afford to pay the, the, the uh, child support and they get locked up in county jail. Well, how are they supposed to pay that if they're in county lockup? And why should they be abused if they're in county well, lockup? Well, there, there are lots of examples of that. The, uh, like, like, for example, the um, uh, uh, Driver's Responsibility Act in Lansing, where if you don't have insurance on your car, um, you know, you pay a fine for that, you know, a ticket and, and so on, and you have to, you don't get your insurance. But then you're levied another thousand dollars on top of that by the state, <clears throat> and the assumption would be you couldn't afford to pay for insurance. So how can you afford to pay the fine, let alone this additional tax that gets levied on top of it? But how is that an enforcement issue, and not a legislative one? Well, first of all, so impound their car, don't let their car go back, because that's what happens. We allow them to get their car back when they're violating 
uh, traffic violation, whether it's insurance or whatever. Uh -huh. We, we allow them to get their car back or the family to pull their car back out and so all of a sudden they get back on the road and they're driving again. Impound that car and do not allow that car to be let loose until all fines and penalties are paid. Don't lock them up. We have overcrowding jails right now. But the bigger point is with the jail is not that we have overcrowding or that we have, although that's severe, but that, that they're treated harshly as this, as these major crimes, you know, and they're, these are not massive criminals. They're, they're just well, the, the system is, is set up like a like a production line, and it doesn't matter whether you killed somebody or you didn't have car insurance. You're still, you know, treated the same way under the auspices of fair treatment for everyone. But it's not fair treatment, and and the other problem is is that it's the sheriff's responsibility. He's taken an oath to the people. And he's been elected by the people as a lot as the highest law officer in the county, supersedes everybody, and so it's his responsibility to represent the people and all the people of the county, not just the surrounding counties. He's look at the water crisis in Flint. What is he doing about that? Is, is the current sheriff doing anything about the current water crisis other than when a celebrity news media comes into town, he gets out there and gets his picture taken with them and. Other than that, we know of no other situation where uh, he's doing anything concerning the people of the city of Flint. Flint is not a black hole in the middle of the county. It's, it, well, this is not it, a donut county. It's, in, in all fairness to the sheriff, he's not the only local elected official that's blinded by the national spotlight. <laughs> however, however, I understand that. However, the problem is, is that it is his duty as the highest law enforcement to make sure that his people are protected in the county. That's not being done. There's people that are, have died from being poisoned in this county. So the sheriff, it's his responsibility. And, and my promise, my contract to the, to the city and to the county will be that I will, will vow to protect everybody in this county. How is it the, uh, the sheriff's responsibility when we have, uh, you know, health department officials and, and other uh, so-called trained professionals to carry out things like public health safety? There's been crimes that have been committed with the, with the water situation. It is the sheriff's responsibility to investigate crimes. This has been going on for, for two years or better now. So it's been, been ignored by the most part by the sheriff. And it's his responsibility as an elected, the highest elected official in the county to represent the people. The, um, now, getting to the, the horse race part of this, which is always my favorite, um, there have been, oh, and I, and I did want to point out the fact that you would not be the first in Genesee County, if elected sheriff, to have not had a law enforcement background. Thank you. John O'Brien. Thank you. Was uh, sheriff of Genesee County. It's been a while. But um, let's talk about the, the, the likelihood, because in Genesee County, a lot of times these races are all decided by the primary, because it's almost always going to be a Democrat. What kind of chance does a Republican have, or do you think there's something different about this particular election year? In my heart of hearts, I'm not really a Republican. I am probably realistically more of an independent. Uh, I, I primarily vote Republican because of my personal. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were a Democrat passing as a Republican. No, say, no, no, now no, that no. is a reversal. No, no, no. Because no, no. usually there's a lot of Republicans who run around and run as Democrats. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I don't. I don't believe that that a county sheriff, to be honest with you, should be a party position. It should be a man of conviction that will represent the people. I am that man. And but but in Genesee County, and this is a countywide race, which is very expensive to run, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, in in Genesee County, this is this is the county that when the state went sixty forty the first time for Rick Snyder, Genesee County went sixty forty against. That's a lot of Democrats. Yeah, it is. 
and it and is. how does uh, you know even even saying an, an independent doesn't have a chance? So I want to go with an organized party. I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll register as a Republican. I'll I'll I'll, I'll do a Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding about that. But but you decided to align yourself with the Republican Party, run on that ticket. But that ticket typically doesn't really have a chance. How do you draw? people from the left over to that side. Well, one thing that's happened this year is the state of Michigan has passed a law where on the on the ballot you cannot no longer vote straight Democrat or straight Republican. It's a you have to individually itemize. You think that's going to have an impact I on those it will. Uh, yes. Yes. 60/40 type numbers. I, I believe so. Well, I don't know about as far as like for uh, a governor or for a county seat, but as far as the sheriff, yes, because as I am out uh, on a daily basis walking the streets of Flint, handing out water, visiting with the people, everybody has the same concern. They're concerned that their sheriff is not doing anything for them. Uh, and, and outside of the city, in the suburbs, I do the same thing as I'm talking to people. I get the same uh, conviction from everybody that what is our sheriff doing for us right now he's doing nothing for us and uh, the deputies are, are all great guys they're doing a great job but the but what is the sheriff doing he doesn't even go to the communities visiting with people unless there's a parade happening so that's something that I would change I would go into the communities on a regular basis and, and visit with the folks on the street I'm a people person I make a friend everywhere I go That'll never change with me. It's been who I am for, for since I was a young lad. So I wouldn't change that. I, I mentioned, uh, it, my, my guest last hour was uh, Jamie Curtis, and he was talking about statewide, or not statewide, but countywide races can cost upwares uh, around $100,000 to launch a successful uh, countywide campaign. Um, and, and I don't know that this is your first time out, but I'm guessing that this is the, the first time you've it is correct entered your name mm -hmm. um, on a ballot for uh, elected office. How does a, a, a relative newcomer Matt raise that kind of money, or at least match resources to that kind of expenditure to run a campaign countywide? Well, one I have a, a I'm networked with a lot of individuals nationally. And this is a national movement. There, there are individuals that, that are not in law enforcement that are starting to stand up and run for county sheriff. Uh, the other thing is that I believe that as I meet some of the people in the city of Flint, some of the officials that are Democrat, Republican, that I will get their endorsement. I already believe I have a couple people's endorsement already because they know my character and I believe that that's going to help me tremendously. The, uh, the network that I belong to, I believe that funds are going to come in from that as well, and that's going to help me. Uh, and there's some issues that, that I'm not going to bring out right now, but that, that I will bring out after the primary, depending on who I'm running against, as far as what's going on in the county mm -hmm. and, uh, and what's going on with law enforcement. And I believe that I will convince the uh, electorate out there to vote for me because I stand for the people. I am a people person. I am not some politician. I am not a law enforcement guy that's going to come in and continue to, to uh, watch the atrocities that happen against our people to continue. What are the, uh, the pros and cons of, um, of this, this movement of civilian control at the, at the county sheriff level? Um, versus somebody who's had a lot of law enforcement management experience? Well, because the Constitution is the highest law of the land. The Constitution in it, as you read it, it says that it is the supreme law of the land and no other laws can be adhered that are against that. Any law <coughs> within the county that that is what maybe a judge or, or an administrator or something like that or even an ordinance, if it, if it goes against the Constitution, I as the sheriff promise that I will not allow that to stand. And that's what the other people out there that are running for sheriff, 
because see, it's not it's not a matter of going to school and learning what all the new laws are. But it's there, a matter of adhering to what the the greatest law of our land is. But but there are some. Uh, I'm not going to say, well, ambiguity, uh, ambiguities is the wrong word, but there, there are some areas where, where the federal uh, uh, law, the uh, Constitution, if you will, hands over powers to the state. Absolutely. And, and the, the county sheriff is a constitutional officer of the state. Absolutely. When it comes to interpreting uh, constitutional law, is that, isn't that the job of the courts and, and not elected officials like sheriffs? And It's the job of the sheriff to make sure that the courts are upholding the Constitution as well. And that's, again, a lot of the problem is it's not. You know, uh, it's not. First of all, if a, if a law officer shoots somebody, which is going on like crazy across our country, uh, then then it's up to the courts to try that person as a criminal, correct? I mean, they've mm -hmm. committed murder, at least investigated to the point. There, there are very rarely a conviction, and, and you can watch video after video where that's actually, you can... You just know because of the evidence is right there that the that the uh, law enforcement officer was guilty of a crime. I'm not saying all of them I, because I believe it's it's a double-edged sword. You also have to protect the police officers and and the uh, the uh, law enforcement officers in our communities. And the problem is is that the the whole the whole perspective from the, the people walking the streets out there are afraid of the police officers. The police officers rule it over them that they're the ones in charge. No, they're civil servants and it should be an equal basis and we need to bring trust back into the communities, not only to the people of the communities but also back into law enforcement so law enforcement can trust the community as well. Let's bring it back how it was when you and I were both young lads. Do you think the um that civilian control of, of a department like the sheriff's department in uh, Genesee County. Um, do you, do you think? Well, let me let me go at this the other way. Do you think when law enforcement people hold those administrative jobs, that they're less likely to hold fellow officers accountable for bad acts? I believe so. Yes, I believe so. Uh, not only that, but but I, I'm you know everybody, all of the law enforcement out there, swear an oath when they come into office. The judges swear the same oath. Elected officials, uh, even on county level, city level, village level, all hold the same oath. And it's the same oath that the U.S. military holds. And that oath is, is that I solemnly swear to uphold and protect the Constitution of the United States of America and the people of, mm -hmm. of the country and against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So everybody takes that same oath. I've taken that oath a number of times. In what capacity, man? In 1978, I joined the United States Marine Corps. Okay. And then uh, uh, also uh, just as a, a, as a patriot, I've, I've taken that oath to uphold and protect the citizens of, of uh, this county in particular. Matt, we need to take a, uh, a short break right here. I, I hope you'll stick around to another segment sure, with us. Sure, uh, As we get to know Matt Kroll, Republican uh, candidate for Genesee County Sheriff here on the Tom Sumner program, we'll take a, uh, a short break. We'll get into uh, into your resume and, and some of your uh, uh, vision uh, to, for the future and, and all of that kind of stuff when we return. We'll be back with more of the Tom Sumner program right after this.